Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. Apologies for missing yesterday's upload. It's quite chaotic behind the scenes for Ashley and I right now, so thank you for being patient with us for just a little while longer. Keeping tabs on the latest tariff chatter, Trump has said that he wants to impose higher tariffs on imported vehicles at a rate of at least 25%, with a goal to bring manufacturing to America. And we should hear about this decision on April 2nd. The word is some companies right now are working on plans to bring their manufacturing back to the U.S. And Trump has said that big semiconductor and car companies would announce their move to the U.S. soon. Finally, Trump said it'll be 25% and higher, and it'll go very substantially higher over the course of a year. We'll have to wait and see if this goes into effect or if it's more of a negotiating tactic. Either way, this would of course give a competitive edge to Tesla, a company that builds 100% of the vehicles it sells in America, in America. However, there's a much bigger story brewing when it comes to tariffs that not many people are talking about. The American Active Anode Material Producers, which is just a group of US and Canadian graphite producers, has filed petitions with the Department of Commerce and the ITC requesting tariffs of up to 920% on graphite imports from China. They're arguing that Chinese graphite is being dumped at unfairly low prices subsidized by the Chinese government. And of course, if proven true, that would threaten the very young and new graphite industry in the U.S. And we just had the ITC rule that they're going to proceed with this investigation, which tells us there is a belief that there's sufficient evidence of harm to U.S. graphite producers. Of course, a tariff over 900% is quite extreme, so there would likely be some negotiation if this were to be implemented. And don't forget, during Trump's first term, Tesla did successfully lobby for an exclusion from tariffs on Chinese graphite. We likely won't hear an official decision about this investigation until later this year, maybe in the summer. But just know, Tesla does rely heavily on graphite for the anodes of its batteries. And we've covered in the past how China dominates this market, accounting for about 90% of the global battery grade graphite supply. As a reminder, graphite can account for roughly 10 to 15% of a battery's cost. Roth Capital Partners actually put out a study on this and they estimated this 920% tariff could raise anode costs by 125%. And yes, we've covered in the past that Tesla does have a deal with Syrah Resources for graphite, but there's no way they're going to scale fast enough for Tesla's demand. This will certainly be one to keep an eye on because if those tariffs of over 900% were to go into effect, Tesla's battery pack costs could end up going up by thousands of dollars. Just as a reminder, on any given year, LFP batteries make up over 30% of global EV graphite demand, so yes, even LFP batteries use graphite. During Trump's first term, when Tesla won that exemption from graphite imports from China, the tariff rate was only 25%. And last year, Tesla applied for an exemption from the tariffs on synthetic graphite, arguing it had been unable to find a replacement for Chinese graphite and needed until the end of 2025 to do so. Tesla said there's no single manufacturer outside of China that currently meets Tesla's specs and additional capacity requirements. So I think you get the picture. This is definitely one to watch in the months ahead. And Benchmark Mineral Intelligence said today that if these tariffs were to go through, the cost for anode active material making up around 7% percent of the cell could jump to 45 percent. So clearly, this would be a significant threat to Tesla's margins. This is also a loud reminder of why a localized supply chain is so important. Figure AI put out a pretty impressive video today highlighting their new VLA, their vision language action model, which combines perception, language understanding, and learned control. The name for this VLA is Helix, and they showed it working simultaneously on two robots, allowing them to pick up these objects that they say they've never seen before. In a separate video, they showed their robots picking up different objects out of a group, simply following natural language prompts, again, based on objects they've never seen before. Figure said this VLA runs entirely on the robot, meaning through the embedded low power consumption GPUs. Before I continue, we have to take all of this with a grain of salt. They are now making claims that this Helix is going to allow for new behaviors to scale with no programming and with no demonstrations. Figure did say they're collecting data using teleoperated behaviors with around 500 hours in total. 
and that Helix is trained fully end-to-end -end mapping from raw pixels and text commands to continuous actions, which if true would be a big step toward generalized robots. And in this video they showed how figure robots equipped with Helix can pick up basically any small household object with a simple pick up the insert blank command. So the claim is that these figure robots can now do all of this on the fly without any task specific demonstrations or any extensive manual programming and all done with pretty limited teleoperation time of around 500 hours to get that high quality supervised data. And Brett said 2025 will be a pivotal year as we start production, ship more robots, and tackle home robotics. You guys probably know, to date I've been somewhat skeptical of figure, something about Brett has just seemed off to me, but this is the first time they put out a more detailed report telling us what they actually have going on beyond just the video demonstrations that I just told everybody to be cautious with. So for now, I would say props to figure, and sure, there's a chance that figure AI is actually for real. Brett said, we've been working on this project for over a year, aiming to solve general robotics. Like a human, Helix understands speech, reasons through problems, and can grasp any object all without needing training or code. And now you just know that Tesla's engineers are even more eager to put out a new video showing what Optimus can do. So let the games continue. All of us are likely trying to get more insight into Chinese EVs and AI, but the Great Firewall limits our access. Sadly, internet censorship is expanding outside of just China and everyone should be prepared. Do you want to end up somewhere, whether on vacation or at home, where you don't have access to X or certain news outlets? Yeah. I don't either, which is part of why I'm still using Surfshark in 2025, the sponsor of this video. I highly recommend familiarizing yourself with a VPN like Surfshark, not just to ensure your online activity stays private, where even Surfshark does not keep logs of your data or activity, but because Surfshark has plenty of cool features like testing prices on flights and hotels. Did you know that a study showed flight prices can vary by hundreds of dollars based on your location thanks to dynamic pricing? So Surfshark allows you to mask your location to get better deals. And back to censorship, Surfshark has no borders and camouflage mode that are tailored for users in these environments to bypass any site blocks or censorship. If you're a gamer like Elon, Surfshark can help prevent any throttling of bandwidth that your ISP may be trying to implement. Surfshark's encryption hides your activity from your internet service providers, preventing those slowdowns. And truly, that really only scratches the surface of the features Surfshark offers, so if you want to check it out, you can head to surfshark.com slash electrified for four extra months of Surfshark. The link is below. The Financial Times is reporting that Tesla is now bracing for a potential delay in obtaining Chinese approval for FSD. Tesla has been told there is no definitive timetable for regulators to approve a license to begin widespread use of FSD, despite an earlier indication it would get the green light in the second quarter of 2025. Initially, Tesla was shooting for an FSD rollout in China in quarter one, that was bumped back to quarter two, and now that seems to be in doubt. Chinese authorities are contemplating using the approval of Tesla's FSD license as a bargaining chip in trade negotiations with Trump. Sources are saying this is the main reason for the holdup in granting the permit. If there's a silver lining, they're saying the approval could still come soon depending on how trade negotiations develop. But others are saying some people at Tesla believed a speedy consent was unlikely unless there was a major breakthrough or concession in trade talks. And don't forget what Elon said, right now China will not let Tesla send video data outside of China and the US government won't let Tesla train in China. So Tesla's in quite the predicament even if this license gets approved. Pair that with the fact that more industry players in China are now saying that if Tesla tries to charge charge five, six thousand dollars for FSD in China, it's going to be dead on arrival, thanks to what BYD is doing with its God's Eye autonomous system, offering it for free with the vehicles across its lineup. But for now, BYD will only make that system free for cars that it sells in China. My point here, with each passing month that Tesla's FSD is not released in China, Tesla
Tesla's window to sell FSD at a more premium price point continually erodes. So we'll see how this all plays out, but at least right now, the wins in China for Tesla's FSD are certainly more of a headwind than a tailwind. I do tend to agree with what Elon said though, within a few years, almost no one will want a car without FSD. A sentiment that I've dogmatically been sharing with my network now for the past six or so months. Watt EV, the nation's leading provider of heavy duty freight electrification services, announced a new agreement with Tesla to take delivery of 40 Tesla semis in 2026. As part of the agreement, Watt EV has taken delivery of two Tesla semis so far to expand its freight hauling service in 2025. They said Tesla Semi is the only truck in the market that can deliver 500 miles on a single charge with superb energy efficiency and fast charging. Separately, Watt EV did actually launch the nation's first solar powered truck charging depot in Bakersfield. Their CEO said we've been future proofing all of our charging depots to allow for the transition from CCS charging to megawatt charging with MCS. Not only does Watt EV develop electric truck charging infrastructure, structure, but they're also a provider of electric trucks through their truck as a service model. This is a no-brainer move for Watt EV because their mission is literally to replace diesel trucks with battery electric alternatives. Through this truck as a service model, fleets or even individuals can get electric trucks without the upfront investment. Things like maintenance, insurance, and charging costs are all bundled into a per mile rate. And beyond providing trucks to others, Watt EV does operate its own fleet of electric trucks. This California company has the goal of deploying 12,000 heavy duty electric trucks on California roads by 2030 and operating 100 charging stations by 2035. They're also expanding their network beyond California with plans for depots in Oregon and along routes toward Arizona and Texas. Given that Watt EV's current fleet is only a couple hundred at most, that growth to 12,000 means there are plenty of EV semi purchases ahead, hopefully more from Tesla. Responding to a video of a little scuffle at a Tesla supercharger, Tesla Charging said virtual queuing pilots starting in quarter two at select sites. The goal is a customer experience improvement for the roughly 1% of cases with a wait time. Wider rollout this year if feedback is positive, and Tesla is continuing to expand the network 20% year over year, closely tracking site level demand. It's not clear how Tesla plans to do this, but I would imagine once you navigate to a supercharger, if it's full, you'll get a number and you'll be assigned to a stall. But the big question for now is, will this queue show up to non-Tesla EVs that are planning to show up at these sites? In the rumor category, we have Chris Zhang indicating that the Model 3 may be getting the turn signal stock back just like the new Model Y has. I've not yet heard anything about if retrofits will be available, mainly because I haven't even confirmed if this is true or not, but we'll see. Given the new Model Y has the front bumper camera and the turn signal stock, I'm sure plenty of Model 3 owners are reaching out to Tesla with their complaints that they feel left in the cold. The video footage of the Cybertruck crash testing finally came out, and Tesla put out its own video talking about all of the testing and engineering that went into getting these results. I'll have the full video linked below if you missed it. Wes explained this part for us saying the bumper beam was crushed in the first few milliseconds and the vehicle senses and determines what type of crash is happening and how to best deploy the restraints. As the crush continues, bending the steel of the drive unit cradle to move the drive unit down and out of the way, this enables the casting to progressively crush cell by cell with a nearly linear crush energy, slowing down the vehicle smoothly and over a longer period of time. During that time, and in concert with the structural absorption, the restraints are deployed, which further reduce the acceleration of the occupants, reducing probability of injury. And you can see on the left how accurate Tesla's virtual analysis was compared to the actual physical test. Important to highlight that the casting in the Cybertruck performs differently than your traditional stamped steel would. So typically stamped steel would bend into three different points to absorb energy. Whereas with the casting in the Cybertruck, it breaks off into tiny pieces and the smaller the pieces it breaks into, the more efficient your crash structure is. Then as we know, typically gas trucks carry most of the weight in its body and the gas tank, which are mounted higher and compare that to the Cybertruck where most 
most of the mass is in the battery pack, which is actually the floor. And because of that, the Cybertruck has the lowest probability of injury and the lowest probability of rollover of any pickup on the market. I think many of us were expecting this, but now that we have the data, I think it's fair to say that the Cybertruck is likely the safest vehicle on the road. Just know right now there's plenty of chatter and speculation about Tesla entering India. We talked about the job postings, but now we have sources saying that Tesla is planning to launch retail operations in India by April of this year. But we have other sources saying Tesla is aiming to start India sales around the third quarter of this year. So perhaps in April they'll have a few showrooms, maybe some demo drives. But the word is the initial plan includes introducing an EV priced under $25,000 dollars for the Indian market. And Tesla has not yet committed to making its EVs in India, but it does plan to increase component sourcing from Indian OEMs. They're saying Tesla has selected locations for two showrooms in New Delhi and Mumbai. Opening dates for the outlets have not yet been decided, but Tesla plans to sell imported EVs in India, and these deals are for showrooms, not service centers. As I said on Tuesday, the market for Tesla's vehicles now in India is smaller than I think many people are expecting. Obviously that would change if Tesla were to have a vehicle under $25,000, but we still have no idea what the import tariff is going to be for Tesla. So even if Tesla had a $25,000 vehicle available, if the import tariffs are 100%, that jumps right to $50,000. Trump though is not happy. He says, and I quote, if he builds the factory in India, that's okay, but that's unfair to us. What Trump meant there was highlighting what he's been saying that most of the world is exploiting the United States when it comes to the tariffs against US products. It would be nice to have Tesla available in the Indian market, but I'm not expecting any major boost to Tesla's sales volume unless two things happen. One, Tesla does actually unveil a new model that is around $25,000, and two, Tesla finds a way to exempt itself from any tariff above even 10 or 15% for the Indian market. But without a factory there, that seems unlikely because India also has to think about protecting its homegrown players as well. It only took a few years longer than it should have, but Nikola is finally going bankrupt, and I hope to never have to mention the name of this company again. Tesla has some new items in the shop available for the Model Y, like this cooler for $275, compatible with all Model Y vehicles and this mega pack charger that can charge three devices at one time for $120, but it's already out of stock. Met God shared some new video footage at Fremont showing the Tesla vehicles driving autonomously to the outbound lot from the factory line. So no, that was not just a marketing hype video from Tesla recently, but it's really happening. Today we have Stellantis announcing its auto drive system, which is level three automated driving. They said it's ready for deployment but they did not say anything about which models or regions it would appear in. But as you may guess, there are some limitations here. It can only be used up to speeds of 37 miles per hour in stop and go traffic, but they did say it could be used at night and in challenging weather conditions. The sensors will be cleaned automatically, but Stellantis didn't say anything about what kind of sensors are involved. And we have to remember that plans for level three systems from Audi and Renault were both announced, but then later both canceled. Tesla stock closed the day at $354.40, down 1.71%, while the Nasdaq was down 0.47%. It was the lowest volume day we've seen over the past few weeks, trading 40% below the average. Don't forget, if you're interested, check out Surfshark linked below and stop paying too much for flights and hotels just because of your geography. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did. You can find me on X linked below. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.